OMG, we are all here at SOCAP 2014. And in San Francisco, which is a wonderful, vibrant, vibrant place that's about neighborhoods. And actually, I was reading that it's described as 49 square miles of endless possibilities. And isn't that so aligned with the theme of igniting vibrant communities? I'm really pleased to talk to you about St. Elizabeth and our story and journey over the last few years. St. Elizabeth is a little different as an organization, and some people think we actually have multiple personalities. We are a nonprofit charity. Some describe us as Canada's largest social enterprise. Some view us as an investor, others as an investee. We have an army of 7,000 workers, personal support workers, nurses, rehab staff, physicians who care for people primarily in their homes and in their communities. Our revenues and resources hover around 300 million. And on any given day, we are servicing 11,000 clients. But to our core, St. Eliz is all about hope and happiness for society and for the world at large. That is St. Elizabeth today. But in 1992, it was a little different as an organization. We were, in fact, um, much smaller, about 300 staff, very geographically dispersed. We had some interesting and challenging governments. We had a friendly culture, but a little quirky. A lot of challenges dealing with uh, multicultural uh, populations. And our finances were really shaky. So we said, well, all right, how can we make a change and what can we do? What I hope for this morning in these brief few minutes I can encourage you and help you, as you all know, and understand that social impact and purpose can be a perfect marriage with business, and it can continue to be a loving relationship. So, on to the journey of St. Elizabeth. In my early days as CEO, and I started way back in 1992, we had, as a health organization, very traditional success. A lot of government contracts, primarily in the home care space, and started to move into servicing some of the marginalized groups, the First Nations populations, the homeless populations. They were very small. We were growing and diversifying primarily in government-funded initiatives. But, you know, I kept thinking there should be more. With the success that we are having with our growth, we should be doing more for society. And then in 2012, I read a great article by Michael Porter and Mark Kramer, Creating Shared Value. And for me, it was one of those sort of eureka moments. It was as if Porter and Kramer had got inside my brain and started to organize the disjointed thoughts I had about social impact, purpose, and the success of a business. And their article really was all about the fact that capitalism was broken. And they saw a way companies could knit society and companies back together by using shared value that connected social issues and economic issues. And that would unleash a powerful force. And the engine would be turbocharged for social impact, and innovation would be the gasoline. So it occurred to us at St. Eliz, well, it doesn't need to be all or nothing. Why can't we, as a nonprofit, in fact, be a social ecosystem? Why can't we rise to this occasion? So. We took on the challenge of a somewhat painful process to try to embed more fully in our organization social value and what that would really mean as we continued to further our business success. And it's been a work in progress um, as an organization, just as I am a work in progress, and we continue to learn along the way. 
But I wanted to share with you three key themes that I think have helped us in this journey uh, for, for success in the social enterprise space. And they are stick to your commitment, lots and lots of little mistakes, and scale and size. From a commitment point of view, St. Louis certainly had a head start because our origins 106 years ago was to heal the sick. And it was to, in fact, actually birth babies in their home environment. So we were very clear about our social purpose. But it took commitment over the last few years with a very successful, primarily government-funded organization at every level, including the board level, to go, why are you looking for trouble? Your business model works, just keep growing and expanding. But I think that helped us commit even more to the conviction, no, we want to do more. And it's less about the strength of St. Elizabeth and more about how we're going to impact society. But it was a journey with a lot of commitment and a lot of confusion which needed a lot of courage to move forward. And of course, there were a lot of mistakes and continue to be mistakes. And our mantra has always been act, implement. The mistake is there, fail quickly, move to the next. That is the only way we're moving forward. And I think you can really define what an organization is all about by how they celebrate the mistakes versus necessarily how they celebrate the successes. Our key mistakes, I think, fell into two categories. And one was timing. Some things were way too fast what we were expecting to do. And as we know, you can't hurry love. Other things were slow. And we started, started to see new ideas and new solutions. And we said, wow, we should have been there. And understanding that innovation to move it forward into the next space said, we've got to make sure we structure the organization to allow that to happen. Thirdly, we underestimated the confusion for our organization when we said, we're going to be a social enterprise. And many said, well, aren't you already that? What have you been doing? And to really work through what we were striving for from a societal impact was very interesting. Size and scale has probably been, I think, the most significant um, learning lesson for us in that we had to be patient with our organic growth and also through acquisitions to begin to understand how we could use our weight and our brand to actually benefit society. And we conduct now 6.4 million visits or exchanges to people throughout the year. And our thought was, this could be a tremendous test bed that we could allow people to use so we could begin to actually harness the power of people and get change to happen, get transformation to happen for tomorrow. And it, it, it was a leap of faith. Today, it's not just our size, but the fact that the organization is very committed to innovation that has moved us to use that size and space very, very differently. Internally, with our 7,000 staff, we are using a social media platform called Soapbox, which allows all of our staff at any time to provide their ideas to us so how we can spread that hope and happiness. But you've got to be ready to listen to those ideas and respond to them. And that's been a really interesting insight for us to see how the power of people, both internally and externally, can help you achieve the heights you're trying to move into. So thankfully, as I stand here today on the stage, we have had, I think, some very positive outcomes. Firstly, innovation is embedded in the DNA of our organization. And it's not just innovation for change, but social innovation. And what I've done is really cocooned an uh, incredible motivated workforce that has been charged to go outside of the healthcare world and see where we're doing things better. And to bring in those ideas and resource those ideas within the organization. 
We have very interesting titles for these positions and they report directly to me and it has allowed the organization to understand how this is so important as a priority and it's the gasoline that will make us successful. Ventures is another area where St. Elizabeth has quite frankly put our money where our mouth is. And we have put money aside to fund other ventures, other initiatives, amazing entrepreneurs, and help them to help themselves to create the kinds of solutions that will help society at large improve. And we've been part of accelerator programs and a number of wonderful initiatives that is bringing the inside, outside in to St. Elizabeth. Lastly, collaboration has been another outcome where we've been partnering with very different players than a traditional 100-year-old health organization typically partners with. And they've been everything from technology labs to colleges of arts and design to again help us come up with new ideas and new solutions to help service marginalized groups, help transform care that we're providing, and help people, in fact, improve their lives and improve the outcome. So in conclusion, as I reflect, the story sounds like it was very linear and predictable, but it's really only been in hindsight that I've been able to put them into themes and compartmentalize the journey. What's been clear from the beginning, however, is the speed, the sprint, the space we're in that requires a huge pace of activity. And like the title of today's talk, OMG, here's tomorrow. What I think is most important is we all remember how relentless we must be to get the changes that are necessary. No matter where our beginnings are as organizations, as, inventor, as investors, as inventees, it's all a part of an ecosystem to get the solutions. And I hope in these few brief remarks I've given you encouragement to, in fact, imagine the possibilities and move forward on your dreams. Because like the wonderful quote from the very wise Dr. Seuss, unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot Nothing is going to get better. It's not. Let's make sure it does get better. Thank you very much.